Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make a first person shooter in Unity and welcome to episode 26. So this time we're going to look at another enemy, which will be a spider. We'll have a little bit of animation going on, we'll modify a couple of scripts and we'll add a new blood type as well to our spider. We'll also do some extra tags. So firstly what I'd like to do is come away from this whole area where we've had the zombie and I think I'm going to deal over in this area a little bit more. So I'm going to bring in our new enemy type. So I'm going to go to our assets folder and I'm going to drag and drop this spider enemy which you can get on the website for free. Head over there, downloads and assets, FPS section and you can get it there for free. And if we go into it and into models you'll see we have the spider. It's a little bit big so I'm going to decrease him. Uh, 0.75, 0.75, 0.75. Uh, we'll leave him facing that way for now, but the idea of what's going to happen here is almost the same as our zombie enemy. Zombie enemy itself is encased in a cube, and essentially that's how our spider is going to be as well. So, game object, 3D object, cube, and this allows us, in the same way as the zombie, to basically shoot it and give it commands to come and attack us. So let's increase the size of the cube to cover the size of the spider. Roughly about there I think. Just pull it back just a little so about there. Increase the size and pull it upwards and pull it out the ground. Shrink it just a little. Okay so that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Right click. Rename spider enemy 001 and then I'm just going to drag and drop the spider into that cube. So now we have the spider enemy in and I think the best thing for us to do is almost make it as identical to the zombie enemy as possible. So the zombie enemy itself has a rigid body, some scripts, and inside the zombie itself has the animation. So what we'll do is with the spider we'll get rid of that animator and we'll add in its animations. So add component, animation, and I think the standard animation is going to be the idle animation. And let's change the size to include attack, uh, die and walk. We'll leave jump for now, we'll deal with that at a later date. So we need Change this to four, I think. So element one, let's have as attack. Uh, element two will be die, and element four, uh, sorry, three will be walk. So now our spider is capable of these four actions. And what we'll do is the script that we have, um, let me find my scripts folder, it's there. And the script that we did have as a zombie follow, I'm going to hold control, press D to duplicate. And I'm going to rename that to uh, spider follow. So with C sharp, what we have to remember is the class name must be the same as the script name. So if we go into spider follow, the first thing we're going to have to do is change it from zombie follow to spider follow. Now, the reason I'm not going to use the zombie follow script on this. Um, spider itself is because we do need to have a couple of changes. So primarily I would say it's going to be the animations that we have because remember the animation names for the spider are different. You could always rename them if you wanted to but I feel having different scripts allows me to show you that there are different ways you can code an enemy. So firstly let's change the walking to walk. Idle will be the same but it's all lowercase. And attacking, I think it's just attack, isn't it? So, attack. And let's save that script. So, at the same time, I'm going to put this uh, script on the website. Even though it's technically already there, the zombie follow, I'm still going to put it there just so you guys can take this script if you so need it. And what I do think we're going to do now is let's have a quick look at the console. We shouldn't have any errors. Perfect. Let's get rid of the mesh on that cube. And I'm just going to quickly review what we have for our zombie follow script. So we have the first person controller, the enemy itself, uh, the hurt UI, and a couple of audio sounds for when it attacks us. 
and uh, the enemy script we're going to need that but we, we'll leave that just for now because we just want to have the spider and its um, AI working just for now so spider enemy let's attach our spider follow script if I can find it there it is so let's set these in the player oops nope it's first person controller isn't it not character so first person controller is the player the enemy is going to be the actual spider screen flash is her ui so when it attacks us her zero one is all of those audio sources so we can just set them in there and what i'm going to do is i'm going to save my scene and hopefully when we press play we should be able to see this spider coming at us so as we get a little bit closer there we go we can see the spider has now noticed us and coming for us i think though what we need to do is change the speed because the animation is a little bit slow sorry the animation is a little bit fast for the uh, enemy itself so the enemy speed figure is slow so let's set this to 0 0.3 and I think I'm going to change the allowed range to 20 so it comes after us a little bit sooner. So let's head back into Unity, head to our spider enemy, and the allowed range hasn't changed, so we'll just change it to 20 there. Resave our scene, and let's press play. Let's head on over here. So you can see with just a couple of alterations, we now have a brand new enemy which is coming at us and hopefully <clears throat> there it is <clears throat> attacks us as normal so the attacking needs to change as well because we've noticed there that when it's attacking us it's uh, the timing is different so i think each attack is about half a second so we need to review the enemy damage here is attacking one pain sound then we need to wait we have 0.9 uh, seconds. I think we need to change that to 0 0.4 and save. So as I say, this is all about modifying your uh, enemy AI to kind of work with each enemy because you can't have the same AI script for every single enemy. It's just not going to work as intended. <clears throat> okay, so we need to decrease just a little more. So I'm thinking we need to yield wait for seconds here. This needs to reduce to about 0.75 F. So it is these two figures that you need to adjust uh, bit by bit just to get it perfect. And I'm not going to modify any more if this isn't right. You should take the time just to get it right for yourself. <clears throat> So yeah, it's almost right. So we just need to modify them. Now, what I'd like to do is have a little bit, uh, maybe a horde of spiders. So I'm going to take this, hold control, press D, and let's move it over this way. And let's have another one, hold control, press D. Let's bring him up about there. Let's have another one about there. So we have four spiders coming after us. Let's quickly rename. Uh, two and four so we should be able to see that regardless of however many enemies we have the same script can apply to this particular enemy type which is all good so this one should attack <clears throat> us but the other one won't <clears throat> now they're both attacking so as long as it's the same enemy type then the same um, concept of script can actually work so what we'll do if we press play and let's pick up a gun if you remember last episode we coded our zombie to spurt a little bit of blood so what we need to do with that is change it on the spiders because if we look if we shoot the spider we end up with a bullet hole floating in midair and we said we were going to do a different blood type so let's head to our blood particle Hold control, press D, and I'm going to change this to blood particle 
green. And yeah, you probably guessed it. It really is as simple as just changing the color to green. And obviously you would take as much time as you need to. But I'm just going to show you how it can be done. So what we need to do is on our damage script, we need to add in an extra tag. And I'm going to call the tag just spider, to be honest. So what we'll do is if hit dot transform tag zombie, then yeah, we do that else we do that, which is the bullet. So what we need to do is change this maybe just a little and we can copy this if hit transform tag is zombie and just change it to spider and we'll have instantiate the blood. I'll actually call this the blood green, which means we need to have another variable. So the blood green and obviously that is a game object so at this point if the tag is a spider then yeah it does that so i think instead of an else statement what we may actually decide to do is have one that says untagged so this one here where we have instantiate the bullet i'm going to actually change from an else statement to if hit dot transform dot tag equals untagged then we do the following so that's all we need to do for that little bit there so hopefully all these close curly brackets will close everything up perfectly and they do so you can see we're really working with tags now so anything that is labeled as untagged which is almost everything it will create a bullet so we need to create a tag called spider for these spiders so Add tag plus spider and then on each of the spiders set it a spider and there we go now when we shoot these spiders providing we actually have uh, a death animation which we'll do in a second um, in fact we should be able to shoot them now and it should uh, come out as the green blood so let's test this out i always find testing is the best part of development always a lot of fun to it so let's go and shoot these spiders okay yep i've just realized we didn't set our green blood so blood particle green i think what i might do is change the green blood i think i'd like the duration a little longer so point two and i'd like start size double the size just hopefully so we can see it a bit better okay i like that so let's go shoot these spiders and test this out once we've done that we'll get our spiders to die so let's pick up our weapon let's go shoot some horrible spiders and let's have this one there we go so you can see, see oh we ran out of ammo let's reload we shoot the floor perfect shoot the spider green okay so the final thing we need to do is add in that extra little script which if we look at our zombie enemy we have enemy script script so if we look at our enemy script which is here open up in mono develop or visual studio what we need to do is create another one for the spider so hold control press d on enemy script and i'm just going to call this enemy script spider so once again you, it's doubtful that you could use the same script on multiple enemies it has to be a different script for each enemy but you can have the same script for the same enemy type so enemy health we'll have this as let's have it as 15 and we'll call this instead of the zombie we'll call it the spider we'll still have this is the same the deduct points function update this dot get component this needs to be changed to spider follow or whatever you have named as the um, actual <laughs> script itself and the spider 
if we remember the animation is just called die so we need to change that to die and save and you can see here we have called end zombie and uh, what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to put a double slash there to block that out because we don't want to run this let's just keep the spider dead um oh yeah of course we need to change this here to the spider and save and as i say i'll put these scripts on the website anyway so you can download them if you have any problems so you've probably guessed it last thing we need to do is add that enemy script spider to our spiders and we don't really need to do anything apart from set that variable and if we go back to our zombie zombies are always a great one to actually refer to because that's our default enemy so we can always base new enemies off that so the spider enemy we need to put the actual spider in there not the actual cube that it's encased in so the next one enemy script and we need to put the spider once again enemy script spider and we need to bring it in there oops i've uh, pulled the wrong one there so it should be that one for there so in doing this you could end up having a massive swarm of zombies well, or spiders coming at you whichever one you wanted or a combination of both it's entirely up to you so now with a bit of luck we should be able to test this all out pick up a gun shoot our spiders three times and they shall die let's try it out let's go over here and let's have uh, this one first okay so he is going a little bit crazy let's see if it happens to this one as well so they're dying over and over and over so let's go to the spider script die and we just need to change the wrap mode to once it looks like that's the only problem that we have here so as i say testing games is all something which will take a lot of time but i'm going to shoot these spiders there and we'll leave that tutorial so let's just check everything works as it should do okay so it's still looping so here's where we have a little bit of fun to try and find out why it is looping so the spider dot get component play die so what i think we need to do is because we've disabled the script what we'll do is we'll reset the enemy health of the spider to something maybe it doesn't really need to be so we could set the enemy health to one and that would effectively stop the repeat animation but we'll deal with something later on to deal with a zombie down here so we'll just do enemy health equals one and let's speed this all along and this should be the final thing so next episode what we're going to do is we're going to look at creating a cutscene for our game uh, we'll actually look at a headshot specifically for our zombie and we'll probably start putting together some uh, more objectives so we've got something to do in the game so there we go spider's now dead lovely so that's the end of this episode guys if you have any problems remember the scripts are always on the website you can download them there for free and leave comments in the below if you have any questions so until next episode guys thank you very much for watching